So I'm out here in the noisy sphere because I'm going to be using a noisy, well, not just a noisy tool, but a, yeah, like I said, <laughs> got grackles behind me, woodpeckers beside me, but uh, got to get this done. So here I am out in the noisy sphere getting ready to uh, cannibalize this uh, laser pointer. Now you can get laser modules pretty cheaply off of uh, Amazon, but I have this in my hand right now, only paid a dollar for it, and it only took me a few moments to crack it open. Now, Kip K simply, make sure this thing works, there we go, we do have laser. Kip K simply took it apart, or took the uh, batteries out, and clipped clip leads in there to connect up to the pointer without destroying it. Well. I'm going to go ahead and cannibalize this so I can get at it and do some soldering so I don't have to press the button to make it work. Without further ado, yes, a bit of overkill here, but I want to do this quickly. I don't want to, uh, I, I could use my Dremel tool and take half an hour. This will go through it pretty quick. So let's go ahead and take the clothes off of this laser pointer here. Let's start by taking the front off so we see where we have to work. It looks like I just have to do a little grinding right there and just peel the package off. So here we go. Stand by for a noise. Looks like my evil plan may be falling apart right from the start here. Looks like I might be melting the plastic underneath the aluminum, but let's use this little screwdriver to try to pry it open. Probably should use a flat screwdriver, but well, let's see what I got in my pocket here. Here we go. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Looks like this is going to pry right off, peel off just as nicely as it can be. Not always. Things don't always work as nicely as this. I'm covering up the slice myself on this aluminum here. There we go. out of the way. Take the scary label off. Oh, look at that. There we go. There we go. One nice removed laser module. Looks like I nicked it a little bit there, but all I have to do is look at the circuitry, probably just solder those together and hook up power to it, and we'll be in business. So we'll take it to the inside and uh, see how that works. So we have my workbench here, an old Radio Shack brand Micronta 12 volt regulated power supply that I made a modification to. If you have done or are following along with the power supply project, you will see that it can be made a variable by putting a potentiometer in the right place. This is a very similar circuit to the project and all I had to do is find the equivalent place, which you will see in those videos if you watch them. I found the equivalent point put in a potentiometer and turned a 12 volt power supply into a variable power supply. So let's put a voltmeter on here. And adjust the voltage. So, uh -huh, yeah, it says 12 volts, 14 some odd volts there. Let's crank that down to four and a half volts, which is what the laser pointer should want. I think that's close enough. Let's get the meter out of here. And okay, now let's hook up the laser. I believe that the battery goes on this way. That would be the negative side. And the positive side hooks up to Let's see if we have any operation if we just hold it there. Oh, there we go. I think I'm going to clip it right there. There we go. There we go. We have laser. So 
Now what I'm going to do is crank this voltage back. Let's put a voltmeter across this. And what I want to find out is what voltage does it start to put out a significant output. So let's put the voltmeter here. Can you see that? Oh, let's put it on the little cradle so you can see it. Is that better? That's a little better, and I can point the laser right at that. So let's crank that down. Make sure we're cranking it down and not up. I'm kind of holding this backwards. Let's take that down to one volt and bupkis. Let's crank it up. There we go. I don't know if you can see that or not, right there on the dial. See where it is? I'm going to crank it back. Let's put a, something white here. Here we go. Yeah, perfect. Can you see that? No, you can't because it's not... Oh, yes, yeah, it's just barely on. There we go. As you can see, we can amplitude modulate this laser beam. I wonder if I can crank it up. don't want to crank it up too high. I'm risk burning it out. We can crank it up to 4.5 volts. That's what it takes. So there it is, full brightness. Huh, can you see it? Oh, no, you can't, s hmm, can't see it. Oh, well, that's amazing. Can't see it on the white piece of paper. Okay, anyway, there's the laser. And let's crank it down, 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 down. And uh, I'm going to say at 2.5 volts. Let's see, let's put it at 2.6. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but that beam is actually quite large. It's about an eighth of an inch in diameter. Ah, and it doesn't, you know what, it doesn't look like laser light either. Yeah, it does now. Here we go, it just popped into a higher brightness. So it looks like uh, 2.7 volts is my minimum voltage. But I can crank it up and you can see I can change its brightness significantly. So we can amplitude modulate this laser. So what I did that you couldn't see because I had to have the lights out, uh, I had to have the lights out because I'm using this photo cell here and of course the lights are following on the, following on the photo cell and you can see I'm getting well, with the lights on over a volt off that photo cell. I just want to see what it gets with the laser. So I'll kind of simulate what I did. So I have power supply hooked up to the laser voltmeter hooked up to the laser also so I can see how much voltage I have across the laser. I'm going to hold the laser at a certain distance at angle, kind of crude, but it'll work. And then on this meter here, which you can't really see that well, but it doesn't matter because you couldn't see it in the dark anyway, I'm going to read the voltage that comes off the photocell. So we have voltage going to the laser, the laser hitting the photocell, voltage coming off the photocell, so the power's on. I set it up at 3 volts, Shined it at the photocell and got a little over two tenths of a volt. So then I cranked this up to 3.5 volts. Holding my finger in the same place, shined it on the photocell and got about 0.35 volts off the photocell. So I cranked this up to 4 volts and got about. 0.4 volts off the photocell. I did that all the way up to 5 volts and got about 0.47 volts. So what I was doing is looking for a, to see if I had a linear region of operation, basically meaning if I doubled the voltage across the diode, I doubled my light output. And just assuming that if I double my light hitting the photocell, I double my voltage, which uh, is a reasonable uh, assumption. So if I have a region where if I double my voltage, I double my light output and therefore double the voltage on the photocell, if I plot that on a graph, I get a straight line. And so we call that linear operation where we get a straight line. So we don't want to have a nonlinear place. So let's say if I double the voltage and I get instead of two times the output, I get one and a half times the output. Well, then if I plot that on a graph, I get a curve. 
And so that's a nonlinear region. So if I get a curve, it's nonlinear. If I get a straight line, it's linear. So when I plotted that, I found that I had a good straight line between 3.5 volts and 5 volts. So this has a good linear region of operation. So if I have a nonlinear region, such as this curvy area here, and I put a wave in there, it's going to distort the wave because it doesn't uh, react the same in all parts of the wave. But if I stay in the linear region, then the wave doesn't get distorted. So here is uh, my wave going in, nonlinear region, I get some distortion. But if I have work in a linear region, I get no distortion on the way out. So that's what I needed to look for. And what I found out is that this diode is very linear between 3.5 and 5 volts. So we'll design the amplifier to work in that range. Before we button this project up, there's one more thing we need to find out, and that's how much current this uses. So we're going to drive it with a maximum of 5 volts. I need to know how much current it uses at that 5 volts to make sure that our circuit can handle that. So I'm going to start by cranking the voltage up to 5 volts. And now I need to set up the meter to measure current. So let's turn off the power and disconnect everything from the laser diode. Now to measure current, we need to make the meter part of the circuit. So we are disconnected so we can safely move this over to the, I don't think it's gonna be as much as one amp, but I'm going to measure this on the 10 amp range anyway, just because it could be, I doubt it takes an amp, but I'll put it there anyway. So we have this on the 10 amp range, and notice I had to move the red lead from the volt, ohms, and milliamps into the 10 amp socket because it uses a different circuit to measure high current. Basically, it's got a uh, just a hip, fairly heavy piece of wire in there, and it uh, runs current through there and measures the voltage across that wire and extrapolates the current out. So when it's set up like this, this is a short circuit, so we want to make sure that we put this back when we're done. So this is set up to measure in the 10 amp range, and we need to make this part of the circuit. So here's the uh, 12 volts coming from the power supply. That's going to go to the current meter. And from the current meter, we will go through a clip lead over to the photodiode. So now we already set that up for five volts. This is now set up to measure current. Turn on the power, and as soon as I press this button, we should see a reading in current. So here it goes. And jittering between four and five there, so that'd be between 40 and 50. So that's saying, that's probably pretty dang close to 50 milliamps. And that's what I need to know. I could set this up to the 200 milliamp range and get a better reading, but 50 milliamps looks like it's going to be close enough, so I will leave it there. So, now we know that this laser diode wants to operate between 3.5 volts and 5 volts, and at 5 volts it's going to require 50 milliamps. So we can design around those parameters. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.